Hello, this is Denisa, and welcome to the fourth part of my Cluster video series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain the app, the slide puzzle that uh, I made, and hopefully you're going to be able to make after the explanation I made of co the color switching app that I made last video. All right, so the first thing you're going to go over is layout. So this uh. Which the the this app incorporates the typical scaffold. Um, go down here. This is this is the this is the this is the widget that the main function runs, and of course it builds um it builds this right here: parent access, parent, child, and scaffold. Now that doesn't quite look like um an app but i'm going to explain why in a little but it it does if you if you look further the child is the scaffold and this has everything you have on the screen so it does not the widget does not directly return the scaffold but it's still running that and i'm, I'm going to i'm going to explain in a bit what, just why but just again um flutter app app bar and a row and column of the this of this grid view widget right here. So uh, this looks a bit convoluted, but I'm going to explain um, just why. Just know that this this is the grid here, which is being called inside here, and this grid, of course, um, has is sort of like a list view. Uh, and you can scroll, but I've disabled the scroll since this is meant to be a static grid. Um, but it uh, has elements in ordered, um, in just how many cells you want, which you can specify here. And as children are these buttons, and this is detailed in the buttons list here. And it, and it calls a widget called button. This is a uh, some widget. That I've made, and you will notice if you scroll up and look at the button that actually, um, look at the button that actually it's not it. This is not directly calling a stateful widget, making a stateful widget. In fact, it is making a, a building a widget here, and then detailing it in the list here that is a list of states so it's i'm creating a list of states and then only building those states inside here with the stateful builder which is building those states here and there's a reason for this um using grid setup i cannot directly create a stateful uh, a widget outside here so i need to make the states first uh, which will then actually be built inside the application and all of this is referenced outside of the actual button press widget itself and that's why um, uh, this is set up like this it's not building the actual stateful widget inside the button press but just the state and uh, I think personally it it creates it gives you an understanding of how the stateful widget works really the stateful widget is only creating the state that you see here where um you will see that all the functions occur all right so now on to the actual function of the game a uh, very simple game you click a button you uh, you click another tile and it moves so all of these um all of these are buttons as you can see here this extends the boss button and um, each of these buttons are assigned a number, an index and a position. And now all of those mean pretty much different things. The reasoning for this uh, differentiation is the number is referring to the string and the uh, position is referring to 
the position that it initially is and, and the index is referring to its current position in the grid. So string is the number it displays. So what what number it is, an index is its position in the grid. Um, so for example, this number five here right now, it's position um, uh, number five, that's its index. Um, now, um, its index will be number, well, number eight. And that's why you need to differentiate between that. Um, and so what happens when the button is pressed is uh, right here, you, see, you can see in the build, uh, on the unpressed, uh, if, if uh, it checks first, um, which has been pressed. So you need two buttons to be pressed after another to actually facilitate movement. So once it's been pressed twice, um, it runs the move function. The move function then checks using the can move function if the movement is legal. And if the movement is legal, it swaps the index uh, of the widgets, and then and then use and then you can see here it changes its appearance um, accordingly. Uh, you can see here. So if it's being pressed, it will uh, be highlighted as a darker green, etc. So now uh, it changes places and it sets states. As you can recall in the last video, this is uh, to change the appearance. Um, however, uh, this is not uh, where it, it does not end here. Um, once it switches places, it does not uh, update appearance. Um, that, uh, directly or right afterward, and I'm going to explain why. This is also um, where keys come in use because um, you, as you recall in the color switch video, when a stateful widget um, is up, is up, uh, for example, switching positions, it will often not hold information to. It will not often hold only information to the type and not the information. So it. It, um, as you recall, when you switch the red and blue widgets, they did they switched, but they did not show this because they they had swapped the widgets, but they retained the color information, which was not being kept, and that was because of the unique key. And in this case, the button also takes in the unique key, so that every time it switches a position this information is being updated. So for example, the string, color, and etc. Uh, one other thing is that after a movement is being made, this set state is only changing state of the button. What this means is it's only setting the change inside of the button and the stateful widget that is responsible for updating this entire grid's uh, appearance is this, the parent grid, the grid. So what um, this convoluted return parent access right here is giving the, the, uh, the button state access through what is called an inherited widget and it's giving the it's passing down information so sort of the scaffold um so that when the button is changing position and it updates state it will also using this function out here parent access of parent set state it will also set the state of the scaffold and therefore the grid. So you're not only changing the state in front of the button, of the button, sorry, you're also changing the state of the grid, which um, under normal circumstances, you wouldn't be able to refresh the parent. And this is all because um, the button is a separate widget that is being accessed by the parent grid. All in all, next uh, word is pretty fun. Pretty cool game to try to code if you're just starting out with Flutter. Um, 
I've linked the website where it is being hosted and deployed uh, in, this bit, in the description. And if you click the more about this button, you can get, uh, you can see this source code. And if you're, if you're ready to do so, you think you're confident enough, you can try making it. So that's all, and thanks for watching.